wake up. Because little Ahmed asked me, how can you stay positive in a world full of hate where the blood of a Muslim is worth much less than the food on your plate? It's like standing on an earthquake and expecting not to shake. It's like slamming your fist into a glass door and expecting your hand not to break. Are you awake? Because he says, for me, it's all right, but just don't expect me to smile a day while my Burmese brothers and sisters are being thrown to the waves and as bombs fall over Palestine and Yemen. Don't expect me to smile a day. You can call me young and stupid, but the world made me this way. So now you know who I blame. But how did it get this way? Because I see conference after conference, study circle to the next, we larger than ever as an Ummah. But when's our condition going to change? And that's when I said, look into the mirror, son. And that's where you find the change because it's been staring you and I in the eye every single day. And the problem with the Ummah is not our enemies, is what we've thrown away, it's inspiration we've forgotten because we've left the prophetic way. So are you awake? Because you see, we follow a prophet who was an orphan, shepherd boy and was poor, but that never stopped him from standing up for what he was sure. The difference between right and wrong, the bringer of good news, because he is and always will be, to the believer, a guiding muse. So don't be confused. He was human just like you. And that's why the generations who followed his example, even though they were abused, managed to write the course of history, even though a pen our prophet couldn't use. Like Ahmed ibn Hanbal, who wouldn't change his Quranic views. He wasn't a celebrity sheikh bruv. Rather, he was the victim of abuse, of a messed up system, but he never changed his views. Or Imam Malik, who was beaten, both his hands broken too because he stood up for what he believed in and he never changed his views. And did you know that Bukhari was an Arab, but still managed to compile the best of Ahadith? Imam Nawawi died young, but still remains an inspiration to you and me. So don't tell me, don't tell me you're too young or old to change the world, because to me, it just means we're too scared to chase our dreams or too timid to find the legends we have hidden deep within. Because whether you're a brother or a sister, young or old, we've been blessed with the key like Muhammad al-Fatih, if only we could see that what we're losing is our legacy, the golden fleece of our deen, it's knowledge. That's what we've abandoned. And that's what's caused the destruction from within. Because Information is what you know, but knowledge can't help but show. It's what inspires you to act when the world tells you no. It's what stops you from sinning when nobody else will know. It's what wakes you up from heedlessness. It's that green light that tells you, go. See, it's that spark that we're missing, and that's why we've been put on show. It's the light that peels away the darkness. It's the believer's guiding glow. And knowledge doesn't come easy because you got to practice what you preach. It adorns you with humility. And so now I ask you this, are you awake? And if you are, step away from the window and stop expecting the world to change. Because maybe you're that spice that's missing. Maybe, just maybe, you're the inspiration waiting to spark the change. Wake up.